Hi everyone and welcome back to my channel. So what I'm gonna do today is actually take you along with me because I am doing a personal branding photo shoot. And what I wanted to do was give you all the tips so that you can do your own without actually having to go out and hire a professional photographer because they can be expensive, it can be upwards sometimes of a thousand dollars. And if you're just starting out, you probably don't wanna invest in that. There's other things that you could put your money towards. So I'm gonna show you exactly how to do a personal branding photo shoot on a budget. But the first thing you do need to do is make sure you get a photographer. You know, it's gonna be a lot harder for yourself if you are trying to take the photos of yourself. Now, yes, I just said not getting a professional photographer, but what I say is deploy your most bossiest type A organized friend. If you don't have a friend that is good at photography, then generally that type of personality is great to, you know, sweeten them into coming along with you and taking some photos for you because they'll be sharp, they'll be efficient, they'll give direction and you're just going to get things done a lot easier rather than someone who's kind of, oh yeah, that looks good, if you know what I mean. I'm not trying to offend your friends, but you know the type of person I'm talking about. So make sure you ask one of your friends, can I book this day in with you? Will you come with me to take some photos for me for my personal branding photo shoot? And then the next thing obviously is to schedule in a day. When you are asking someone to come along with you to do a personal branding photo shoot, schedule in a day, put it in the calendar, just like as if you would have done it with a photographer. So my second piece of advice for doing your personal branding photo shoot is that you want to scout a location. For me, for this particular shoot, I have actually hired an Airbnb. This was a very cheap Airbnb. It was only $69 a night. And the reason why I've done it is just because purely the decor, that decor, decor, whatever, that they have in here, it's all black and gold, which matches my branding. And it's a high rise apartment. So we assumably would get lots of natural light. It is a gloomy day, but whatever. But you don't have to hire anything. You can absolutely just do somewhere out and about around your town, even in your own house if you have nice decor there. But for my last personal branding shoot, I actually just went to the big football stadium here and then around because I really wanted to have a very Melbourne feel. So I'll insert some photos of what that looked like. So you wanna choose a location, whether you get them Google Maps or Google Earth and have a little look around, or you do a little drive by around your hometown before your actual shoot, and just pick out a few places that are going to be great to shoot, you know. Maybe you wanna have that real kind of laptopy lifestyle feel to your shoot, so you can go to a cafe and shoot there, or even shoot down at your local beach if there is one near you. But find a location or multiple locations before time so that you're not wasting any time on the date looking for places to shoot. So my third tip is that you want to choose an arrange of outfits before the day that complement your brand. This is a personal branding shoot. You're trying to show off the lifestyle aspects of your business and your brand, and you want your style to represent that. So out of the wardrobe that you already have, or if you have in your budget to go get some new stuff, go and choose at least, you know, five to six different outfits that are easily able to be changed into, and then you want to plan them out. So what I actually did is I actually just, you know, on a PowerPoint slide, I took photos of all the different outfits that I was going to be wearing and I actually wrote down which scenes I was going to be wearing them in. So with you already having your location in mind, you can base your outfits upon each scene that you want to get. So it's a really good idea to plan out all of your shots in advance as well. You know, it's good to leave some room for some magic to happen, but it's a good idea to have a little bit of a structure and then you can have an outfit to coincide with each individual picture that you do want to take and plan them out beforehand and then you and your photographer can both work off this. Now, obviously I'm in an Airbnb, so I can easily change into these, but if you're out and about, that's absolutely fine. Last time I just changed in the car or even if you're really sassy, change behind a bush or something like that, you know, stranger things have happened. But another tip is that you can just change one of the accessories of or one of the pieces of your outfit. So maybe you have just plain clothes, colored clothes underneath, and then you change your jacket a couple of times, or, you know, you can slip a skirt over pants and pull the pants off easily. So just get sassy about it, whatever. It's all about getting the shot, not about people judging you in the street. So my next piece of advice is obviously on the day of your shoot, you wanna make sure that you are doing yourself up nicely, but I don't recommend doing your makeup any different than you would normally do it if you were filming a video or doing a Facebook Live or a client call or working. You don't wanna look any different. You want this shoot to be super authentic to you. Now, hair's a different story. Hair's just an accessory in my opinion and it changes so often. You can use your hair as an accessory, get a nice wig, get a nice, you know, some extensions, chop it off short, get a nice hat, whatever. 
if you want to be a little bit sassy with your look, but I try to keep your makeup pretty consistent with how it would normally be. I mean, I'm wearing the same makeup that I would wear in my videos. I always, well, quite often wear lashes and I always have some type of shiver on my, shimmer on my eyelid with, you know, bronzer and highlighter and all that jazz. So do your makeup nicely. Don't go out and get it professionally done if that's not something you do. Don't feel the pressure to do that. You want to look like you. That's really important. Of course, you know, you're setting a scene and telling a story with these photos, but you're also telling the story of you and your authentic self. And my last tip is to get inspiration for your poses. Now this is a lifestyle shoot, so you don't wanna to be too posy posy, but I think going on Pinterest beforehand and looking at some people that you admire is a really great way to just see how you should stand and look and the shapes that you should make with your body are during the shoot. You know, it's really good to be conscious about your posture, about your limbs, make sure everything is looking nice and tight but it's also good to look relaxed and candid as well when you are taking photos for a personal branding photo shoot. So go get some inspiration on Pinterest or even just on Instagram at some of the people you follow if you're not natural in front of the camera and make sure to use the things that are around you. So if you're in an apartment, like use the couch, use the table, sit on the table, use props, use the pillow. If you're out and about, go sit on some stairs or at a bus stop or you know, lean on a railing or something like that. This is a lifestyle shoot, so you don't want it to be all posy. Now, those are great to have some of those shots. They look amazing on Instagram, but it's best to show off you working in your natural habitat, whether it be outside, prancing around, or you know, in a house, whatever it is, but just make it look as candid and natural as possible because those are the ones that show up your personality and that's the purpose of this shoot. So I hope these tips were helpful. Please do let me know if you've got any questions about doing a personal branding shoot. If you do a personal branding shoot and use any of these tips, then please do tag me on Instagram because I would love to see them. That would be absolutely amazing. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Oh wait, I forgot. I've got one more tip. So... If you need like, say 20 to 30 photos, you wanna take as many photos as possible. Do not just take 20 to 30 photos. If you need 20 to 30 photos, take 200 to 300, the more the better. You know, there's always just those little angles that are off or that piece of hair that gets out of the way. Make sure to take as many photos as you possibly can because the more that you have, the more that you're gonna have to choose from later. That's it for me, that's all I have. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one.